When overclocking and trying to successfully achieve low latency gaming, you need a stable overclock. There's a lot of different ways of testing stability. We're going to go over the best ways to test stability. Make sure that you get that high FPS. And of course, low latency. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here. And today I'm going to be going over the best ways to stabilize your overclock on your RAM, CPU, and GPU. There's a lot of different tests that people like to use. Some of them I think are really good. Others, I say don't touch with a 20 foot pole, maybe even a 50 foot. Now, what a lot of people say is stable can just be anywhere from, oh, it runs the game successfully and doesn't crash to, I need to basically be able to survive a nuclear fallout with this PC. It's insane. A lot of different levels of stability. I try and basically find somewhere in the middle, like, I'm going to run a test, run it for about an hour. If it passes, perfect. I don't have to worry about my overclocks anymore. I'm not going to crash in games. I can run a very high demanding load, render some videos, and I'll be fine. We're going to go in the order as I mentioned earlier. So starting off with RAM overclocking stability, then CPU, then GPU. This is the way I really recommend overclocking your systems. You can overclock the GPU first, but I really would recommend overclocking the CPU later. Overclock the RAM first. That will just make sure that you can get the more performance out of your RAM. CPU, you're not really going to get as much from overclocking. So, but let's get right into talking about stability and what are the best tests. Also, down below in my Discord, if you subscribe for just $5 a month, you can get access to my OC guide. It is currently expanding and getting updated regularly. We're adding more things, allowing access and overclocking info for more platforms. But this will tell you basics about overclocking. And just getting really a cheaper alternative of learning how to overclock five dollars a month you can save a lot of time without having to buy my service but if you are interested for 150 dollars, i will fully overclock your pc you won't have to worry about stability i'm gonna do that maxing out your overclocks i'm gonna do that get it all good for you also leave a comment down below what kind of pcs you have do you have any overclocks you're doing and what kind of stress test you like here we are on my desktop now one of the most important apps that you can even install is hardware info 64 so just go to your browser go to hardware info 64 not 32 64 this is the modern era just download hardware info 64 you can use hardware monitor but honestly it's trash just use hardware info dude everyone uses hardware info unless you're weird i didn't make the rules here so yep make sure you go try out hardware info so we're just going to open it up here we're going to check our sensors. So, um, on a lot of, on brand new DDR, so on all DDR5 and also on certain DDR4 kits, this might be on DDR3, but you're probably not watching this if you are on DDR3, you're going to have something like a DRAM temperature for DDR4 or an SPD hub temperature for DDR5. So what this means is just basically how, what temperature the SPD, so this is like what, what, regulates the voltage and stuff on the ddr5 chips how hot this is getting you can cool this down with a ram fan just lowering voltages but removing heat spreaders even but this is what you want to keep cool so on ddr5 this can be anywhere from it'll be fine at 80 c to you're gonna have trouble going past 50 c if you are overclocking on ddr5 for daily and you are going very high on overclocks I'd say try and avoid about past the 55 degree mark. You might even have trouble past 45 degrees. That's what I have trouble on. You might have to test yourself. For a DDR4 Samsung B-Die, 50C is about the max there. After that, you want to put a fan on there. You won't have to worry about it. You can also see stuff like CPU V-Core, CPU temps, basic kind of memory timings. You also might want to test out ASRock Timing Configurator, finding the one that works for you so you can get info on your timings. But... Let's continue. So you can see CPU packages, clock speeds, all that stuff. We're just going to talk about RAM though. So there are two main RAM tests that I'd recommend. One of them being test mem5. So you can just check here, open file location. And I might post a link down below to my TM5 with all the configs. I recommend two configs for TM5. So let's open this now. And I've never opened this on this install, but you want to hit load config and exit. You want to use either extreme, sorry, apps, yeah, extreme ANTA, or you want to use one USMIS V3. Now, on mine, I modified the one USMIS, I believe. 
so that it runs at oh it only runs three cycles here but right here in the main section you can set cycles to 20 that will pretty much get you a pretty good overclock there but now let's just say that we want to run extreme it's going to restart and now let's reopen tm5 hit ok and now it would start running this would take about an hour and a half or so to run fully on extreme one uh I'm sorry one SMS config would take about the same ish time, I believe. Don't remember the exact run time. Might take a little bit shorter. But if you haven't done that, I would really recommend running Carhu. This is a paid software, by the way. So make sure that you do pay for the software or get it somehow. But you can, I like this though, because you can set the amount of memory it tests, the amount of threads, and also it'll stop on an error and beep. This beep is terrifying though. There's been times I'm working on other things on my other PC. I hear the beep and it scares me. But you can start this if you want. And then you can also see if you hold coverage, the megabytes per second, which is really cool. So you can see how fast your RAM is. Obviously, the faster megabytes per second, the better it'd be. But some things I'd recommend doing are enable CPU cache testing. Obviously, this will show if your ring is unstable on CPU overclocking. This is why I recommend leaving your CPU at stock. But RNG, set that to Zorwow and also check stress FPU. It's a couple things you want to change. But that's the basics for RAM. Now let's actually go to CPU. So for your CPU, there are two things I really would recommend OCCT and Y Cruncher. Both of these have kind of memory tests built in as well. So I'll talk about those itself. This is not the newest OCCT. One second. All right, here we have the latest OCCT version. It does look a little bit different, but you can change that. So we're gonna start here by going to the stability test. So we're just gonna be talking about CPUs for right now. So what I want you to do is I want you to set the data set. So this can be a lot different. The larger it is, the more it's gonna be in the RAM actually. So the more it would be more like a RAM test really. So for a lot of people, what I would recommend for daily is running data set small, mode extreme, Load type, keep this a variable. You do want variable. I found it to be a little bit better. An instruction set, set it to SSE. This is kind of going to balance it out. So let's just show you the difference in power draw here. So we can see that over in the top left here, kind of around where I'm moving my cursor. It's about 56 watts right now. But if I hit start, then boom, we're going to about 390 watts. Okay, I'm on a 13900K, fully overclocked, stuff like that. So this isn't really typical. This is about what you need to be running for daily. Let's talk about temps here. As you can see here, they're all about in the 70s-ish. For a daily PC, I would recommend keeping this about the 85 degrees range. The max these temperatures CPUs can run at is about 95 degrees on brand new CPUs. The X3D CPUs are different, like the 7800X3D about 85 degrees but obviously the lower you keep your temperatures the better and maybe even the higher clock speed you can get so as you can see this is a pretty heavy stress test but let's talk about avx2 avx512 doesn't exist I believe it's a bug that it shows up avx512 but let's just show you the difference in power draw and why i really recommend sse avx2 with small avx2 is just so overkill like look why am i pulling 400 and 25 watts pulling about 4 30 40 more watts it's a little extreme it's just something you don't need most people wouldn't really even recommend this i'm not going to run that for forever but as well there is linpack don't touch the linpack especially in here but for me in my opinion linpack isn't a good stress test so i'm just going to say not touch it you can touch the memory as well for ddr5 especially not for ddr4 you're going to have a decent stability if this passes for an hour i really wouldn't recommend it though go back to the earlier in the video and talk about better ram test there also is gpu test if you know if you've watched some older videos you know i've killed a gpu you doing this i've also pulled 950 watts out of this so this gpu test does pull a lot it is kind of a power virus power maybe if you want to test like a bad power supply do this for me i cannot run a 4090 and 13900k at max power on a thousand watt power supply so i don't do this but that's about it now we're going to talk about y cruncher which is honestly my favorite it's just my favorite um stress test so obviously you are going to need hardware info open this doesn't have a fun looking gui it's very antiquated but i do like it so all you need to do is you just need to open it hit one then hit seven that'll enable all of the y cruncher tests then you hit zero 
and you're in. Now, there's a couple of tests I really would recommend running in here. So those would be the SFT test. This is a full CPU test. Like this is really gonna hurt your CPU. FFT is all in the RAM. So this would test like RAM temperatures and stuff. And then for DDR5 users, N32 and everything past that is an IMC voltage. I'm not gonna go into specifics here, but N32 is typically like VDDQ CPU. VST is totally VDD2. And the other ones can, I do not remember right now. Uh, they changed, to be honest. But VST is also a very good mix of RAM and CPU. So if you just want a simple test where, hey, let's get one where it works together. RAM and CPU test. VST, Y Cruncher, run that for an hour. You'll be fine in games. So just to recap, for CPU, I would honestly just recommend running Y Cruncher. Run all the tests for an hour. You'll see also if your RAM is stable. So you can use it too for RAM stability. That's what I use it for. Really good. Now on a GPU. Now for GPU, you obviously are going to need MSI Afterburner open so you can run your good old overclocks. What kind of overclock is this? Oh, this is my Max OC. But I'm going to recommend 3D Mark here. Now there is a free version of 3D Mark here. You can go Google 3D Mark and then go to the Guru 3D page. This will give you a free kind of test. You won't be able to loop stress test or any of that, sadly. You can purchase some cheap keys online, but you can run some of the basic tests and that's just good enough for simple stability. It's what I used a couple years ago when I was first getting into overclocking. All right, so now that this is open, there is a CPU profile. Do not use this as a stability for a uh, CPU. It's not very good. It's just kind of like a basic stress test. But here's what I would recommend running for 3 d Mark. Time Spy Extreme, 4K DirectX 12, basically the standard. If a lower end GPU, you can use normal time spy. This is 1080p direct. I think I believe it's 1080p. Let me make sure. Custom run. Sorry, it's actually 1440p. It's a little more demanding than I believe than I thought. So you can run 1440p direct X12. This would probably be good for any like GPU you're running. Um, if you want to run direct X11, feel free to do that. Don't touch any of these like Night Raid or Wildlife. They're for really low end PCs and you're overclocking. You can try Speedway as well, but this isn't like the most insane one. I'm not, I've never used Speedway and it's not something I've been like, oh, this is amazing. But if you pay for 3D Mark, and this is what I do test selection, time spy extreme, you can loop it on window and hit run test. This will run 20 loops of both graphics test one and graphics test two on 3D Mark. And you get, it's just really nice. If you pass this, you're going to pretty much be able to have a stable core. So run this for, you know, 20 minutes, I think about takes for 20 loops. So 20 minutes stress test, Set, find your good core clock, and then you're going to be able to go for the memory. So the memory, I'm actually not going to recommend running through the stress test though. I'm actually going to recommend running through the benchmarks. So in the benchmarks, you're going to want to find a score, hit run. Let me do a custom run real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, I ran the test. Quick shout out to 3D Mark for not actually giving me a result. I'm just kind of stuck here. I don't know why it's doing this again. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give me a score. So I have loaded up Marcel. Quick shout out to Bios Man out here. But we're just going to look at his score. So he's running an RTX 4090 with a plus one, 1500 memory clock. So he got a score of 21,959. Now, let's say that he was to set this to plus 1,600. If it didn't crash and it passed the benchmark and he got maybe 22,000 points, then yeah, it's stable, no artifacts, and you're getting a score increase. But let's say that instead he gets, I don't know, 21,800 points. It passed, you might think, oh, this is what I'm gonna run for daily, but no, you're actually getting worse performance and you're getting performance regression. That's what we want to avoid on a GPU overclock. Same thing with RAM and CPU, but you're not really going to see that. You can see it really easily with a GPU. So just test all of your different scores, test them all. Be like, okay, maybe plus 1,000 on the VRAM works really good, or maybe 500 works. Maybe nothing works at all if you're on certain cards, especially like some of the newer like AMD cards you might buy. So yes, the bigger number doesn't always mean better on a GPU overclock, especially with the VRAM. There we have it. Hope this video has helped you get a little bit more info on what are the best stability tests, help you maybe stabilize an overclock you're trying to get, make sure you're not crashing in games. But hope you guys have enjoyed. Hit the like button down below, subscribe if you are new, 
Let me know what kind of stress test you use in the comments. And if this video helped you, join the Discord. See you guys later. Peace.